We want to welcome everyone that's joining us by live stream this morning. Uh, we have a really special treat today. Amen. Uh, you don't have to turn there, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 16 through 18, uh, the Lord God gives us very, very clear instructions. He says in verse number 16, he says, rejoice always. I say rejoice always. That means every day. Amen. Rejoice always. Get up with a, in a rejoicing uh, attitude. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I got spanked on the way into the church uh, when I was stopped at a, with a couple of brothers and I, and I was going against my own preaching and I started kind of just complaining about a few aches and pains. And right in the middle of that, the Holy Spirit said, what are you doing? This is a day to give thanks. So I asked the brothers, so I asked them to forgive me and I went on. I wasn't going to voice it anymore because today is a day to give thanks. It says rejoice always. It says, it says in verse number 17, pray without ceasing. That does not mean you go throughout your day with a Bible in your hand praying the word of God. That means relationship. That means from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night and even all through the night, you are considering your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and your heavenly father. Can I get an amen? amen. And then verse 18, and this is where it is today. In everything, everybody say everything. everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ for you. As I said, we're going to have a little different service this morning. Probably be a, a a uh, shorter service. That's what I'm hoping for so we can get on back there and start munching down. Uh, but it will be a, a, a different type of service this morning. And as the aroma is indicating, it will be followed by food. Can I get an amen? amen. How many of you brought an appetite? Woo. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Today's going to be really special because today we're going to get to brag on Jesus. Amen. We're going to get to brag on him, <clears throat> and we're going to get to openly thank him for what he's done in our lives. And I realize that I could probably look around this room, and I could probably pick anyone out of the uh, congregation, and I could ask you to give a short blurb about how God has been good to you and what he's done for your life. And I see the looks on everybody's face. You do not have to worry. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> but I could, and I know you could say something. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I have asked a few people to testify and give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for them. The first one I want to bring up is my bride, Miss Brenda. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I wrote down a few things, but you know what? I get so busy when I get here and my mind's on other things. So um, I just want to say thank you, Pastor John, for giving me this opportunity. At least I have permission to do this versus just flying off of the front row. Y'all know that I have a tendency to do that. Uh, but I tell you what, God has done so much in my life. I am so very grateful. This is Thanksgiving and it's the season uh, and the month to reflect and be thankful for what God has done in our life. You know, I think about where he's brought me from. I think about him. I don't reflect and think about all of the stuff that we've accumulated over 51 years uh, that's come and gone in our life. But I, I, that, that's just, that's going to go away. I reflect on how good our God is and that I am now serving the God of creation whose son is Jesus. Amen. That he has given me new life, like the song says, that I have new life. He is my life giver. And uh, I think about how the day that I realized, and I know y'all have heard my testimony and I'm not going into it because it's the same one, but it's the same one that has literally changed my life, changed me from the inside out. I don't live from the outside in anymore. I live from the inside out because 
because that's where my foundation is. It is he has re-identified me according to the word of God, set me on my feet, praise God, that there is no greater joy than to serve a living God. Amen. You know, there's churches filled today with people that unfortunately, because, and I say it not, not judgmentally necessarily, but we used to be a couple of them that they just go to church. And they live no different. It's just a Sunday and they go to church and, um, but they don't have the life giver living on the inside. They, they, I don't know because I know something happened to me back, uh, when we truly went all in. It was like, you know what, God, there's, your word is not true in my life. So it's not, it, it's not you. It's gotta be us. And here just the other day, God had given me a scripture, uh, actually a psalm. And I was out on the, pa- pastor and I was out on the back porch and I was sharing it with him. And he said, oh, well, good. You know what? Cause then you're going to share that. And, and I just went on because at that comfortable setting, we just pour from vessel to vessel. We iron sharpens iron. I mean, we just go back and forth and we, and, and as he says something, it, the Holy Spirit just, enlightens on me and then I say something and we just we have the best time and before we know it it's 11 or 12 o'clock that day so we've had our bible study and then he goes off in his office and he starts preparing for you guys so um if you would uh and none of this stuff is in my notes praise the lord so we're gonna go um um so my daily thanksgiving and where I come from is psalms 100 Psalms 100, one through five. It's only five verses, but uh, the one thing that stuck out, and I'm going to read the whole psalm, if you will, please. So Psalms 100 is a psalm of thanksgiving. It says, now, y'all know I take the word of God, this Bible, I take it personal. It is written for me. I didn't know that till... 25, 26 years ago, but I take it personal. You read your name in there and it'll be personal to you guys. Amen. So when I read it, it's talking to Brenda and it says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. And we're a land. Amen. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Brenda, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Come before his presence with singing. So I do that in my privacy of my own home. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Woo, I can do that. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generation. So let's go to the amplified version. This is what I was telling pastor the other day. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know, perceive, recognize, and understand with approval. You need the Holy Spirit for that. Amen. That the Lord is good, is God. It is He who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Amen. I don't belong to me. He bought and paid for me. I didn't learn that until 25 years ago. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and say so to him. Isn't that good? That just really hit me. Bless and affectionately praise his name. Woo, I can praise God all day long. You wake up with the praise, I go to bed with the praise. Amen. For the Lord is good in his mercy and loving kindness everlasting. His faithfulness and truth endure to all generations. Amen. So that is kind of what kicked this off, I guess, in pastor. So uh, that is my praise to our great king. Amen. Amen and amen. So whoever the next one is, thank you, Jesus. Amen.
I don't oftentimes get the sparkly mic. Yeah. So, uh, man, there, there are so many things that, that, that the two of us can certainly be thankful for. I'll, I'll, I'll first start with, uh, I'm so thankful for her. I absolutely am. You know, uh, we obviously got married this past year, and it's, it's been such an amazing little road that we've gone down, and I'm, I could not be any more thankful for her. In fact, I have to admit, I forgot my Bible today. I did. I was in such a hurry to leave. But thankfully, my wife never forgets hers. <laughs> so, you know, I, we, were, we talked a little bit this morning about what we were thankful for, and I think it, it really comes down to family. And I think that would be the, the main thing. Um, you know, it, I think you can use us as, a, as an example, that, that row right there with Kyan and Kelson and our adopted son somewhat, Weston. You know, but... Um, it was just the, the two of us bringing our families together. You know, we, we moved in together and all that. And, and there's been a couple little bumps in the road, but they're, they're truly just little pebbles, you know. And glory to God for that. It's, it's, been, it's been such a, I feel like, a, an easy road. Yep, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been an easy road, you know. But um, gosh, Liz said something to me many months ago, and I, I think about it all the time, you know. And she had said, I don't know if you remember saying this, she had said, you know what, if, I think this is just proof that if, if we're doing the right things and if, if, we're, you know, if we're glorifying God and we're going to church and, and also having church at the house you know, and, and making, trying to make the next right decision, good things do happen. Yeah. Amen? Um, so, yeah, I mean, our, our family, there, there's so many different things that, that, that we've done over the, over the past year that we're so, so thankful for. And, and we've got healthy kids. Um, I mean, both, you know, my daughter Aubrey and, and, and Kyan are going to go to college, and they're, they're going to college exactly where they want to go. Um, he's going to Texas Tech. He's going to be a little red. He's going to be a red raider. Aubrey's going to go to Tarleton State out in Stephenville, and, and the schools are perfect for them, you know, and, and, and it's such a blessing for us. Um, I think another blessing as well is just the, the family, not only our family, but just the family that we have here. You know, this, this church is, is it's an amazing place full of amazing people. And we're talking about all of y'all out there, you know. Um, it, it really does seem like a family here. And, and everyone's so genuine and everyone's so thankful and helpful. And we're just very, we're very, very thankful for that, you know. So, yeah. And I'll say just as, as far as families, um, it's awesome that we have a new family member here at the church. Amen. So, yeah, I, I think we, so many of us have so many things to be thankful for. And I'll say our, our message is just family. You know, and I... When Brenda said she was going to read something out of Psalms, I was just really hoping she didn't read out of Psalm 34. I said a very quick prayer, and you didn't. But, you know, I, uh, I read this months ago, and I, it, it, it does always stick with me, but I, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. And I think that's our call to do that every single day, because, again, there are so many things that, that each and every one of us can be thankful for. And that food next door, that's preventing me from talking any longer. I'm thankful for that. So thank you, guys. Good morning. Um, this is a sparkly mic. I'm hold it like this. Uh, well, uh, good mo- Well, first of all, good morning. I'm Rex Smith and my wife Carolyn. For those that th- you don't know us, can you hear us? Okay, now you can. Okay. Did you hear my name? Okay. Um, but uh, we wanted to share some of the things that we are thankful for. Um, which are so many things. Uh, everybody has something to be thankful for. Uh, I mean, I told Pastor, can he give us five hours? I can tell you things I'm thankful for. But he, he said no. Uh, so I, I, I made notes because Pastor knows that I can get off on these trails, rabbit trails, and I can talk forever. So, um, But um, we thank God daily for 
all the things he does for us. I mean, we don't just thank him once a day, but we, we thank God several times a day. Um, it's just the way we are. We, we know that uh, uh, who gives us our, what we have. We, 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 we know that God, uh, you know, is right there with us. Now, I know it's easy to get complacent. Everybody does, and, and, and you, you don't think about what uh, you have. It's, it's just not freely given to you. The, the people in the world don't have what we have. We're, we're lucky. We're, we should be thankful all day, every day. Um, what we do is we found out, and, and Pastor taught us this on Wednesday nights. You should come Wednesday nights. We learn a lot more on Wednesday nights, but... You can think of things in your head, but till you get it in your heart, that's where it counts. God knows your heart. Um, and then you, you, can, you can really live your life right when you get things in your heart. But anyway, uh, we'll get with the things that uh, we're most thankful for. Okay, and one of the things that we're most thankful for is the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's right. And he did that for us Amen. so that we could live Forever through him. But, you know, remember, he did it for us. Not mm -hmm. for him, not for anything else, but for us. And, and we need to, that's, and that's non-negotiable for us. That's the number one thing we're thankful for. But we're, we're also thankful for our long, healthy lives that we've had. Uh, we've um, also got wonderful kids that, uh, and grandkids that uh, we're thankful that they love the Lord. Um, we uh, love our family. Uh, we were thankful for our family, uh, including our church family, our pastor. Uh, we uh, love our friends. We're thankful for them, our home. Another thing I'll mention, mention is uh, veterans. Let me tell you what, you need to be thankful for our veterans. They, what they do, I mean, allows us to sleep at night. And, and when they go into the service, they don't go to a Hilton somewhere on some nice island somewhere. They leave home for years sometimes and mm -hmm. sacrifice what they have in life for us. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why you need to really, really thank veterans and, and be thankful for them. Now, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I know you've touched uh, on this, some of you, on uh, there's a lot of verses in the Bible that... Uh, God tells you you should be thankful. And one's in Ephesians 5.20, give thanks always and for all things. Yes. And, and like, you know, Pastor says, for all things, not just the things that just make you happy here and there, but all the things. And, and there's many things. And so, uh, anyway, we, uh, we find that um, being thankful uh, gives us a happier uh, life uh, and uh, more satisfaction from being thankful. And we also want to be uh, grateful. Grateful is to recognize his lo the love of God and everything he has given us. And he's given, given us everything. Right. Every health or every breath that we take is a gift of his love. Every moment of our existence is a gift. Well... So anyway, we just want you to know that you need to be thankful. You know, get it in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's good for your heart and your soul. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, you know, we serve a loving God. Mm -hmm. and, and let him know. Uh, be thankful. Yes, sir. Can you also? Oh, one, one more thing. Okay. I'm thankful for chocolate milk. Ooh, praise God, I got a sparkly microphone for the first time in my life. Oh, Pastor gives me a microphone in five minutes. Uh, I, I just didn't know what to say, but the good Lord um, brought that on me pretty quick. Pastor, wouldn't you say about 30 to 60 seconds? Don't worry, I'll get to that part, sir. <laughs> for those that have not previously had the privilege of meeting, I apologize. I'm not trying to be rude or inconsiderate. I'm just not a social butterfly. It's not my comfort zone, but my name is Thomas Rhodes, and I started attending Hill Country Cowboy Church this past summer. I grew up in comfort and throughout junior high and high school. 
I was very active in the church. I led retreats and worship services for the youth group, and I even contemplated seminary school after high school. It probably would have been a much better path, but as we all know, God has his plans. After high school, I came to college in San Marcos, and over time I grew away from the church and eventually from any regular spiritual program. I heard pastor, and I've heard him say it a lot, and he referred to bucket plunking, um, got to a point where I was a holiday bucket, pl- bucket plunker at best. Uh, but that all changed this past January. On January 24th, I received the motivation and inspiration I needed to change my choices, and I checked myself into a 30-day rehab facility for alcohol abuse. (sighs) The education and information that I learned about the disease of addiction and the challenges of recovery has become one of the best educational investments that I have ever could have made in myself. But little did I know that leaving a rehab, God was just beginning his work. In the interest of time, I won't get into the details of all the miracles and revelations that he provided the minutes, started providing the minute I drove away from rehab. But three weeks later, while attending church with my dad in Utopia, I recommitted my life to Christ. And it has been, thank you. And it has been, is, and will forever be the best decision I could have made. I could stand up here again and share stories of the opportunities, blessings, and understandings that I've received in the past nine months, but that food smells really good. So in the spirit of today's service, I'll summarize by the thanksgiving that I have for the most recent blessings in my life. Um, Wednesday nights, we've been talking about healing. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. And I am thankful and praise God for my healing. Over nine months of sobriety from alcohol addiction, pastor said something when we were visiting a while back, and I can completely relate to it. I didn't need a 12-step program. I needed one step. And Ms. Brenda, you said Jesus. And at this point, I'll probably start sounding like an infomercial because I'm going to say, because wait, there's more. Uh, This past week, I went to the doctor as a follow-up for the blood pressure medication I've been on since entering rehab. And praise God, my dosage is being cut from three times a day to one time a day. I'm monitoring my blood pressure daily for the next two weeks, and the expectation is I'll be off any blood pressure medication within six months. But wait, it keeps getting better. Uh, There's more. About 10 years ago, I started a daily antacid medication, omeprazole, for the medical people in the room. Over the past couple of months, I've tapered that off to every other day and spoke to my doctor about it. And essentially, that is uh, for my use as needed and when necessary. And uh, for the Wednesday night, folks, that'll be when I decide to claim my healing. So thank you. (laughs) Uh, I've got a long story related to blood clots and multiple surgeries in my left shoulder, arm, and neck back in 2020. But there's a new chiropractor, I'll save that for another time, but there's a new chiropractor that joined uh, my doctor's office. And due to what I will just say is just slightly different adjustment orders and techniques, I've experienced substantial relief of pain in my lower back, neck, and shoulders. And just the other day, as I was sitting in the parking lot getting ready to leave the doctor's office, After my appointment on the blood pressure medication, I'm giving him thanks, and I reach down to put my seatbelt on, and I realize I haven't worn my lower back support that I used to wear in over two weeks. Clearly, when I take care of this temple, he takes care of me. Oh, there's so many more things, like everybody said, that I could stand up here and give thanks to God for, but I want to respect the time that I've been given. And so I'll end by saying, I'm so thankful Praise God every day for bringing me home and for my family here at Hill Country Cowboy Church. Thank you. Y'all are amazing. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. The bling mic is only for those that need bling in their life. (laughs) 
I got enough bling in my life. Praise God, I've been married to her for 51 years. Oh, I need a bum book, though. Praise the Lord, it's on your left side. Hallelujah. Well, we got a little extra time. Our last speaker's in the back. He's a teacher. Matter of fact, bud, if you want to, you can go back there and get those folks uh, and go ahead and tell them they can come up, come up here. We're going to be taking communion in just a, f a few moments. Just go ahead and go dis dismiss them and bring them on in. That way I don't have to stand up here and wonder what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Get Brenda the mic. Now, we all have things we can be thankful for. I'm not going to go through a, a very long list, uh, but I do have a list. Amen. And I'll just I'll just shove myself in front of the uh, the last speaker. <clears throat> I'm kind of like Thomas a little bit. I've had uh, health issues over my life because of the bad decisions I made at an earlier age. And uh, I would not be alive today if it were not for God's grace and God's mercy and his healing power through the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Through his word. So I want to just thank you, Lord, for saving me. Not only physically, but spiritually. I want you to thank you, Father God, for blessing me with a godly marriage and a godly woman to spend my time with. I want to thank you, Father God, for blessing me with two godly children. I want to thank you for family members who are saved at this present time. And I also want to thank you, Father God, for the, all those of my family who are going to get saved before the rapture of the church in Jesus' name. Father God, I want to thank you for calling me to be a pastor. It is literally the greatest job I've ever had. It literally is. So I want to thank you, Father God, for being patient while I stayed on my fishing trip in the belly of a whale until I answered your call. Because how many of you know that uh, when God calls you to do something, we're always a little bit reluctant to do it. Amen? I want you to thank you, Father God, for allowing me to shepherd such a great group of your children here at HCCC who not only love you, not only love your word, but they love each other unconditionally. And then lastly, Father God, I want to thank you for all those who are serving in this ministry here at HCCC. And I pray that you continue to bless them in their service to your kingdom. Because without them, this ministry would not flourish. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, bro, let's all let's all welcome uh, Brother Austin up. Praise God. I just swapped, I just swapped places with you, brother. Everybody wanted to eat, so you know. <laughs> well, why'd you ask me to talk? <laughs> well, because you're the most <laughs> I can handle that. So I, I, I think I was kind of told that we were thinking about thanks. Y'all, <laughs> a lot of times I sit before God and, and all I got is thank you. I, and I can't even put words to it. And, and a lot of times I can. But a lot of times that joy comes out of me just, thank you. Thank you. You know, so the, so the first thing in, in, as I was thinking about this is, I mean, obviously all of us, but I, I don't know how often we think about it. Jesus and his love. It's unfathomable, if that's a word, to me. You know, he said, no greater love than one who would lay down his life for his friends. And he hits me real hard with that. 
because selfish Austin wants to go, hey, you know what? I'm going to go hunting this weekend. I, I, you know, I don't know if I need to go to church. And, you know, all these things that come into my mind when that old devil starts talking. And I always come back to that. He died for you. Just saying. But moving through that real quick, uh, it goes so much bigger and greater than that, man. The victory. The, what he died to give us. That so, Hey, man, I'm just going to lay it out there that so many of us miss. Completely miss it. I've seen it. I'll be 51 this year, this year, so I ain't too up there as some of y'all are, but I'm getting there. And I've seen believers walk a life of struggle, sickness, strife, anger, drunkenness, whatever it is. And I, and I just can't help but sit. You know, when I think of this stuff and going, man, it's all right here. You know, and I'm really striving to, to get these young people to grab a hold of it, man. Don't miss it. Don't, don't, don't come to a point in your life where it's desperation and it's the only thing you got left and then you go to it. Start it right now, you know. That, that, that's a whole part of this program we're trying to build with these kids and these youth. Grab a hold of it, man. And it's up to, it's up to us. Right? You know, so thankfulness that as I do spend time and I do meditate and I pray and I walk my exploration, because I've always been that guy. I'm going exploring, y'all. See you later. But now I'm exploring the kingdom, and man, thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, I... I, I got to be thankful, y'all. Well, I was, we were talking about it just in real quick, and man, that was quick. I thought we were going to have a little more time back there today. Now, I know the, the little class did too, so we didn't accomplish near what we wanted to. But, you know, I, I think it's Second Chronicles. You know, anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. I'm so glad the old Austin is gone. Y'all. I mean, that, you know, and I, and I think, again, a lot of people miss that because I did. I thought I was a new creation in Christ when I was about, I don't know, nine or ten, whenever it was. Yeah, I, lo I love you, Jesus. I didn't get it till a very short time ago, y'all. So I'm very thankful for that blessing and the Holy Spirit coming inside of me and changing this old outlaw. You know, I, you know, I don't know. I just kind of all week thought about these things, you know, and I'm thankful to be a part of this band of believers. This family God brought me to. And I pray for y'all and I thank God for y'all every day. For, for the, for the, for those that are stepping up giving back their time, their talents, their hearts, their prayers. Man, thank y'all for praying for me. Yeah. Whoo! I got so much to be thankful for. And I think uh, a part of that new creation of Austin the old Austin was thankful for worldly things. And I, and I have to say the old, the old Austin thought that those were blessings. Well, they ain't. They're benefits in a lot of ways. See, well, I don't even go there, but true blessings, revelation, wisdom, change man I'll tell you all my life they said man that boy's got anger problems I don't know why he's so mean you know whatever it was and I believed it 
I was like, well, yeah, I got anger problems, whatever it is, you know. I'm going to heaven, though. I, I know Jesus. And I'm thankful that that's gone. Amen. And it comes, you know, that old devil tries to sneak them on in, especially if you're married. Just saying. But when I react in a scriptural way, love and cherish your wife. Don't be harsh with her, Austin. That old devil just scurries on down the road. Hallelujah. Man, that's the stuff. Joy and peace. And, and y'all, here's the deal with me. I've always been a, like, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. If we're going to beat you in a game, we're going to smother you, crush you, and destroy you. We, we ain't playing nice. Oh, y'all quit scoring on them. No, we're going we're gonna to drive you in the ground, whatever it is. Anything in my work, this ain't a plug, but I'm the best electrician this town knows. And I, and I always will be. And I was told early on, you know, you be God's electrician. I know they're all drunks and alcoholics, but you be God's electrician. But it comes to, you know, work as if the Lord, as you're working for the Lord. But I want everything I can get that Christ Jesus died to give me. And so I don't look at listening to the sermons, listening to other teachers, reading my Bible, meditating as a chore. I look at it as a true blessing. And I tell you what, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm trying to get these young people to grab a hold of it. That's where it's at. Yeah, that relationship. And it's all right here, man. Thank you, Father, for your word, for our freedom that we can come in here, man, and be, yeah, I'm a Bible-thumping Jesus freak. What you got to say about it in this country? Well, how many of us are taking that for granted? I won't start pointing fingers. No, I'll just play it. <laughs> but y'all, that's what it's about. And I'm also thankful for my darling wife who's put up with me and prayed for me. My family, my, my home, my trucks, my dirt bikes, my guns, all these cool worldly things. But at the end of, the, at the end of it all, none of that came to my mind first when I was asked to think about Thanksgiving. And that's a new creation right there. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, and I guess the, I don't know where we are. What time are we supposed to be done with this? Keep going or now? Okay. <laughs> Y'all getting hungry? We had snacks back there, so we ain't too worried about lunch yet. The, the, one of the big ones I, I want to hit on to is in Ephesians somewhere, and I didn't look it up, but we have been given every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Just wrap your mind around that this week. Amen. Every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. All right, that's enough of Thanksgiving. I want to just real quickly, and this is a this is an impromptu thing because they put the mic up here in my hand. Uh, We've got a lot going on in our youth and children's department, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. God is moving big. And, and as we have stepped out and acted in our faith, he's bringing new kids. He's bringing new families. And we've got to keep moving forward in that, okay? And we are. We've got a team that is coming together, and the commitment and the heart of these people, y'all, that I've seen is awesome. Um. So I want to touch base on that a little, a, a little bit. Um, first off, if you would like to give to our youth department financially, because we got big plans. We want to we wanna provide a, a great environment for these children and for the youth, and that takes money, as y'all all well know. When it's tied in offering time, just grab two envelopes, designate whatever you'd like to give to that specific department to the youth children's department. 
That way they can keep it all up and separate and or whatever, however that needs to work. Um, if you would like to get involved, there's a process. You know, there's a ministry. There's all kinds of things. Just come see me. And, and we can help you do that because he says it all the time, many hands. Um, parents that are here and, and part of it, if I don't have your number or you don't have mine, come to me. I'd like to be able to communicate with y'all. Um, also, real quick, if you don't have children or, or grandchildren and stuff, there's probably some kids in your life you could encourage, you could invite to bring, to bring with you. A lot of folks out there don't take the time to take their kids to church or learn about God, and those kids need him too. So we're going to throw a little Christmas party specific for the kids uh, at some point, so we'll, we'll, we'll let y'all know as that comes. You teenagers, I'd really like y'all to become a part of what we got going back there because it's for you. Amen. I'm back there because I like to have fun, but I want you to have a victorious life. So sitting in here is cool, listening is cool, but we'd like you to be a part of that as well. I didn't mean to be looking straight at y'all, but I am for some reason. <laughs> All right, well, you say a blessing over the meal and we'll be done. Thank y'all for letting me visit. Oh, communion. That's right. Okay, bro. <laughs> Woo! It wasn't that good? Amen. Well, as uh, part of our festivities, I guess you would call it, before we go back in the back and, and partake of the food back there, I do want us as a family to uh, take communion together, Okay. So as the uh, ushers will, if you'll come forward, ushers, and give us a few moments, we'll pass out the elements. I will tell those who are watching by live stream or those who even may watch the video at a later date that you at home, you can also take communion with us. So if you have uh, juice and crackers at your house, go get them because uh, you're part of the family. Amen. Now, we would rather see your smiling face here at Hill Country Cowboy Church. How I many of you know, no matter where you live, it's only a drive to church? Amen. Thank you, sister. <clears throat> Everybody else is getting, looking at their crackers. <clears throat> it's only a drive to church. Um, Brent and I, we, uh, we drove for 15 years to San Antonio three times a week to go to church. You know why? Because that's where God told us to go. There's a lot of people in here. I uh, <clears throat> have some very dear friends. They drive from Bernie uh, here on Sundays just to attend church. Amen. <clears throat> it's only a drive. Amen. And don't we have such a beautiful country and beautiful area to drive in? Now, I could understand you not wanting to come to church if you had to drive through Houston traffic for 30, 40 minutes. You know, <laughs> amen. Well, praise God. Uh, no. And I need you up here with me. Yeah, I want all the families to be together to take communion today, okay? Amen. And when my bride gets up here, we'll get started. Let's all stand before the Lord to take communion together. And before we take communion this morning, uh, let me just bear with me while I read from 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And I'm going to read verses 27 through 29. It said, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man, it also means women, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. I want to talk to you for a couple of moments about three things that constitute an unworthy manner. So just bear with me. Number one, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior would make you take communion today in an unworthy manner. If you once were had accepted Christ, but now you're in a backslidden state and you need to rededicate your life to him. And the third thing is, is you're saved 
but due to fleshly desires, you have an unconfessed sin in your life that you need to ask God for. Those are three things right there that would make you take uh, in, uh, communion in an unworthy manner. So what we want to do before we take communion, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you are in this building or you're watching my live stream this morning and you uh, identify with any of those you, that you need to give your life to the Lord, you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, or you need to confess your sin before God and ask him for forgiveness. If that's you, uh, I would just want you to just, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to just slip, slip up a hand real quick. Amen. God sees those hands. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ died for my sin, so I don't have to. Jesus, come into my life. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Now I'm able to partake of your communion because I'm worthy, because you make me worthy. In your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. I also want to read from chapter 11, verse number 23 through 26. And this, uh, this is what we uh, use for our communion scriptures. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. Uh, uh, take and break the bread and partake. In the same manner, he also took the cup. Hallelujah. After supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Partake of the wine. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, thank you for dying for me. He said in verse number 25, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, he says, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Everybody say amen. amen. We need to always remember what God has done for us and what Jesus has done for us. And, we, and, and I encourage you to take communion at home as also, often as you want to because it's important that we keep him in our, the forefront of our mind. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, baby. Amen. Let's pray over the food. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this family that's here today, Father. Father, I thank you that you have provided... Uh, a great meal for us, Father God, to break bread over in the back, Father. I ask that you bless that food, Father God, that gives our body the nourishment that we need to continue doing your work. Bless each and every person that showed up today, Father God. Let our fellowship be sweet, but let us all also exalt your name in everything we say, think, or do. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. The last thing we always end our service with is we serve a miracle-working God, and you are next in line for your miracle. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.